Welcome back to the playlist on lipid biosynthesis. In previous videos, we looked at the mechanism and the biology of an enzyme called acetyl-CoA carboxylase. And what we found is that it synthesizes a very, very important molecule for the synthesis of fatty acids. And let's actually look at the structure of it. So you have this coenzyme A right here. And if I was to just show you that molecule, you should immediately recognize that as acetyl-CoA, right? But then if I was to, instead have a, of having a hydrogen at this point right here, if I was to replace that instead with a carboxylate, right, then I would have the product of acetyl-CoA carboxylase. And the reason it's called acetyl-CoA carboxylase is because we carboxylated um, what really is the alpha carbon of acetyl-CoA, right? And this molecule right here is called malonyl is called malonyl S-CoA. And malonyl S-CoA is very important in lipid biosynthesis, specifically in fatty acid biosynthesis, because it's part, it's a, it's a massive component um, of the building blocks that make up the fatty acid, okay? And in this video, what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at the synthesis or the biosynthesis of fatty acids that have an even number of carbons, okay? And this type of of um, enzyme is called fatty acid is called fatty acid synthase and fatty acid synthase is really the first example of a special type of enzyme that we're going to see we haven't seen really anything like this for the most part um, if you're watching the photosynthesis playlist you've seen some things like this um, but in general this is really the first enzyme that's a complex of multiple enzymes and there's a lot of them and they have distinct enzymatic activities and from a conceptual standpoint it's sort of like something like a pyruvate dehydrogenase complex we know that pyruvate dehydrogenase complex had pyruvate dehydrogenase it had dihydrolipoyl transacetylase and dihydrolipoyl excuse me dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase right so it had that enzyme had three distinct subunits which had three distinct activities okay and this is sort of a similar thing except what we're going to find is that it's much larger and it has more activities okay um and the good thing about fatty acid synthase is you're not really for the most part learning anything new um what i have here is this little chart here and um on the left side of the chart there's the steps of beta oxidation and the nice thing about fatty acid synthase which i'll put right here this is fatty acid synthase the nice thing about this enzyme is that the steps are basically just the reverse of beta oxidation so let's actually very briefly look at the steps of beta oxidation well the first step is we had our fatty acid and we used fad to perform an oxidation of an alkane up to an alkene right so after um, the first step of the oxidation we should have um, a, a trans or an e configuration alkene um, between the um, the alpha and the beta carbon right and that's called our enoyl CoA, right? The next step was an, a hydration of an alkene, that transalkene, right? So we used an enzyme called enoyl CoA hydratase, and that's where we get the name hydration. It's just a simple addition reaction of an alkene. Once we had that hydroxyl group added across the double bond, we oxidized it into a ketone, and that was an NAD dependent oxidation, right? And that gave us a ketone. And then we used coenzyme A to perform the thiolysis of the beta keto acyl CoA into one acetyl CoA molecule and another acyl CoA. Okay, those are the steps of beta oxidation. And fatty acid synthase is essentially going to reverse this. Now, beta oxidation's organic mechanisms are actually very easy, they're very simplistic. Um, and I think that at this point you should be able to predict them for the most part. They're actually relatively easy. And in general, this is not 100% true. Um, there are exceptions to this. But in general, um, for mechanisms that are easy or simplistic, um, the reverse of them is also easy and simplistic. Okay, That's not 100% true. I can certainly think of examples where it's not. But in general, that seems to be the case. Okay, So what we're actually going to do now is before we actually look at the... Um, the uh, steps in fatty acid synthase we're actually going to talk about what they would be called and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put 
um, the first step right here for fatty acid synthase because essentially it's going to be the reverse of the cleavage step of beta oxidation. So this step is going to be a condensation reaction. So in the very first step we're going to um, condense an acetyl group and two carbons of the malonyl group. Okay. In later steps we're just going to condense the malonyl group and the growing acyl chain of the fatty acid. Okay. We'll actually look at the mechanism later on. Okay. Once we condense those, okay, uh, once we condense those, that means we're going to have um, a, a beta ketone group. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the ketone. Okay. So this reduction is going to be a reduction of a ketone into a hydroxyl group. Now keep in mind that step three of beta oxidation which corresponds to the reverse of this was an oxidation of a hydroxyl group up to a ketone and I think this makes sense. In fatty acid synthase if we're reversing that reaction it's going to be the reverse so it's going to be the reduction of a ketone into a hydroxyl group. Okay, And then for the third step of fatty acid synthase um, I'll I want to have you pause the video and see if you can figure out what that reverse step might be. And I'll assume that you've had a go at it. And if, if beta oxidation did a hydration of an alkene, well, what's, what's the reverse of an addition reaction to an alkene? Well, that's just a beta elimination. So this particular reaction will be a beta elimination. Okay. Or another way you could term this reaction would be um, a dehydration. Okay. When you have a dehydration, um, that's just going to be a beta elimination. So in that step, you would lose water. And, and in beta oxidation, when you hydrate it, you put in water. So it's definitely the reverse. And, that, and this particular beta elimination is going to have the same mechanistic steps as, for instance, um, the first half of the mechanism of a conotate hydratase. So you can go back and watch that mechanism in that playlist. We might even have a mechanism in this playlist as well. Okay. And at that point, we should have an alkene, right? So the last step of fatty acid synthase would be reducing the alkene. So this is going to be a reduction, okay? And when we reduce the alkene, we should get an alkane, which is what we essentially started with with beta oxidation. We started with an alkane, okay? At least the, the fatty acid chain was an alkane, okay? So in fatty acid synthase, it's definitely the reverse of beta oxidation, okay? And what I want you to bear in mind about the oxidations in beta oxidation is this. In beta oxidation, the first oxidation was done using FAD, right? That was an FAD dependent oxidation. And that was catalyzed by fatty acyl CoA dehydrogenase. The third one, which was catalyzed by beta hydroxy acyl CoA dehydrogenase, this was an NAD dependent oxidation, okay? Now, these reductions that take place in fatty acid synthase, okay? These reductions are both NADPH dependent, okay? So the electron reducing equivalents come from the hydride of NADPH, okay? So in order to do this reaction sequence of fatty acid synthase, you have to have NADPH present, okay? Now there's several other points I want to make before we actually look at the reaction scheme, okay? In general, fatty acid synthase is good at building fatty acids up to 16 carbons, okay? okay? And so if we have a 16 carbon fatty acyl group, that's going to be a palmitoyl group, okay? Palmitoyl group, okay? So that's our 16 carbon fatty acyl group, okay? If you want to build fatty acids larger than that, which certainly has to be done, you're going to use a different enzyme that's mechanistically identical to fatty acid synthase. So this one's fatty acid synthase, right? There's another set of enzymes that are mechanistically identical, and that's called the fatty acid elongation system. Fatty acid elongation system. Mechanistically, it's going to be identical to fatty acid synthase. But this particular uh, system, the fatty acid elongation system, can build fatty acids that are larger than 16 carbons. In other words, you could say that fatty acid synthase is specific for building them up to 16 carbons. If you want to go past that, you have to use the fatty acid elongation system. So I want to make that perfectly clear. Okay. So having that, bear, having that in mind, let's actually look at how this occurs, okay? And just bear in mind that when you do this reaction, okay, 
Um, you're going to have to have plenty of NADPH. You're going to have, plen have to have plenty of malonyl CoA. And actually, what we're going to find is that your starting material is actually acetyl CoA. Okay, so so it's not that every one of the carbons is going to come from malonyl CoA. No, some of them are actually going to originate directly from acetyl CoA. And what I've done here in this scheme, just so you can see where everything is, is I've color coded all of the primary carbons that are going to make up the fatty acid. Okay, so for instance, um, our carbonyl carbon of acetyl CoA is red, and our alpha carbon of acetyl CoA is going to be blue. Okay, and if, as we go along, we'll actually see where everything goes. Okay, now. Keep in mind, the other point I wanted to make was that fatty acid synthase is an association of many different enzymes, okay? And essentially, these enzymes together, they constitute the reverse reactions of beta oxidation. So they're associated, and essentially, um, this is going to be an example of something referred to as substrate channeling. So the substrates are just going to be passed along from enzyme to enzyme until you get to the final product, okay? So what I want to bear in mind is that um, fatty acid synthase contains a whole bunch of enzymes that are tightly associated with each other, and each one of these enzymes has a different activity, okay? And what I want you to bear in mind is that attached to fatty acid synthase, we have this coenzyme that's called the acyl carrier protein. Okay, and that's what ACP stands for. So anywhere in this mechanism where you see ACP, that stands for the acyl carrier protein. Okay, and our building blocks that we're going to start with is going to be acetyl-CoA. Okay, and so when we say acyl carrier protein, okay, the acyl group of acetyl-CoA is this right here. This is our acyl group. Okay, and in fact, the whole acyl chain um, that's going to constitute the fatty acid is going to be built on the acyl carrier protein. So that's its function. And so what's essentially going to happen is the acyl carrier protein is long. Okay, in, in another video we might actually look at the structure of it. Okay, the acyl carrier protein is long and it can rotate. Okay, and so what can happen is the acyl carrier protein can sort of rotate and associate with different enzymes in fatty acid synthase. Okay, and if you th if you want a conceptual aspect of this, think about it like acetyl CoA carboxylase. That enzyme had a biotin lysine coenzyme, right? And that particular biotin rotated first from the um, biotin carboxylase and then over to the transcarboxylase. Okay, now this enzyme is a lot more complicated, but it's the same concept. Okay, the acyl carrier protein is going to carry the acyl chain that's growing. Okay, and it associates the acyl chain with various enzymes and fatty acid synthase, and then they perform their catalysis. So think of it as acyl carrier protein really controls everything by rotating to orient the acyl chain um, with various enzymes and fatty acid synthase. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Okay, so the initial step in the mechanism is actually going to be to attach the acyl group or the acetyl group from acetyl-CoA onto the acyl carrier protein. And this is catalyzed by acetyl-CoA ACP transferase. Okay? Now, there's another name you might actually see this enzyme referred to as, and it's a little bit longer, and it's acetyl-slash-malonyl-CoA ACP transferase. And the reason that it's called that is that this enzyme not only can attach the acetyl group from acetyl-CoA, but it can also attach the malonyl group from, from malonyl-CoA, okay? And in fact, the only acetyl-CoA that we're going to directly require is this one, okay? So this is, we should star this, this is the only acetyl-CoA that we're actually going to require, okay? Every, every one of the other carbons that's added, sorry, that was a Facebook thing, uh, every, one, every one of the other carbons that we're going to add is going to come from malonyl-CoA. So I just wanted to make that perfectly clear, okay? And also what I've done is I've color-coded the carbon. So in other words, um, I think I mentioned this already. If I didn't, well, oh well. Uh, the, the carbonyl carbon here is in red, okay? Um, and then in this case, the alpha carbon of acetyl-CoA is going to be in blue. And as we're going to find, I've color-coded all of the rest of the carbons just so you can keep track of where everything is, okay? And you'll see why I do that later in the video. Okay, so the whole point here is acetyl-slash-malonyl-CoA ACP transferase transfers the acetyl group of acetyl-CoA onto the acyl carrier protein, okay? So that's our first step. 
Okay, so we have the acetyl group on ACP. Okay, then there's going to be an enzyme called beta keto acyl ACP synthase. And what this enzyme is going to do is it's going to transfer the acetyl group then onto this one that's called KS. And all KS is is it's this beta keto acyl ACP synthase. Okay, and I'm just going to call it KS from now on, but just know that's what it stands for. And you can certainly see that the acetyl group here is attached to the KS, the beta keto acyl ACP synthase. Now in this step, what's going to happen is acetyl slash malonyl CoA ACP transferase is going to catalyze the transfer of the malonyl group from malonyl CoA onto the acyl carrier protein. Okay, and so we note that in this picture right here. And again, I've color coded the main carbons that we're going to be dealing with. The carbonyl carbon of of the malonyl group is in purple, and the alpha carbon of the malonyl group is in green. Okay, now. At this point, we have the malonyl group, which the malonyl group is all three of the carbons, right? But in general, the malonyl group is now attached to the acyl carrier protein. Now, in this next step, which is catalyzed by beta keto acyl ACP synthase, or KS, we're going to lose carbon dioxide by these electrons kicking in to form the carbonyl bond, and we lose carbon dioxide in that step, okay? And that catalyzes the nucleophilic attack of these electrons right here on the carbonyl carbon of the acetyl group of beta keto acyl ACP synthase, and you get a nucleophilic acyl substitution and loss of beta keto acyl ACP synthase okay so this this is part of the enzyme so now what you've done is you've taken this group right here it's technically an acetyl group but you can call it an acyl group you've taken that group and you've attached it right here okay so now what we've effectively done is we've taken the acyl chain that's attached to ACP and we've lengthened it by two carbons right so instead of doing a thiolysis, which would have been done in beta oxidation, we've reversed the reaction and we've um, attached two carbons in a condensation. Okay. And keep in mind that this enzyme is called fatty acid synthase. And remember, synthases are just condensation reactions that don't require ATP. Okay. And that's why it's called a synthase. Okay. So now we've we've essentially lengthened it by two carbons and honestly this step right here is the most complicated step okay this is the most complicated step everything else is is rather easy okay the next step is going to be an NADPH dependent reduction it's going to be catalyzed by beta keto acyl ACP reductase and keep in mind that we're keeping this name ACP in here because the growing acyl chain is going to be on the acyl carrier protein okay and what we're going to do is we're going to use NADPH and reduce this carbonyl right here, this ketone. And we note that in this structure, it's a hydroxyl group, right? It's a hydroxyl group, okay? So that's a relatively easy mechanistic step. If you need to see the mechanism on NADH or NADPH dependent reduction, certainly go watch that, okay? So in the next step, we're going to have an elimination, or in other words, a dehydration. And this, this enzyme is going to be the reverse of enoyl coa hydratase. In enoyl coa hydratase of beta oxidation, we actually put in water. But this is beta hydroxyacyl ACP dehydratase. So we're actually going to form this trans alkene right here, and we're going to lose water. Okay. So um, if it wasn't apparent to you now, this oxygen, right? This oxygen is this one that's part of water. Okay. So we lose water when we form this trans or this E configuration alkene, right? Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to reduce that alkene down to an alkane. And again, it's going to be an NADPH dependent reduction. And this is going to be the reverse reaction of fatty acyl CoA dehydrogenase in beta oxidation. And this is catalyzed by enoyl ACP reductase. Okay, so we're going to reduce this E configuration alkene. And we notice that we have an alkane in this picture right there. So what have we done? Well, We've taken two carbons, right? Let me do this in white. We've taken two carbons that originally came from malonyl CoA, right? And we've taken two carbons that originally came from acetyl CoA and condensed them. So if we add two two carbon molecules together, we get a four carbon molecule, right? And this is our four carbon fatty acid, okay? 
And what we're going to do now is we're actually going to do this process all over again just so you can see what happens because I think that it's going to help you more to see two cycles of this than just to see one. Okay. And essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to reverse this process. Now, what I want to have you bear in mind is this. Okay. Let's label this as A2 and you'll see why I do this in a minute. Okay. So this molecule right here, and I'll do this in blue actually let me do it in orange this part of the molecule this acyl group okay this is a2 okay what's a1 well keep in mind this a2 is bound to the acyl carrier protein okay so if we go back to the very beginning this group right here this is a1 okay why is a a1 because it's the first acyl group that's bound to the acyl carrier protein and i hope that makes sense okay a1 is just the first acyl carrier it's just the first acyl group bound to the acyl carrier protein right and so in the next step what happened well we transferred that acyl group onto beta keto acyl acp synthase so if i ask you what's about to happen to a2 uh, I think you should be able to tell me what happens to A2. You can imagine that A2 is now going to be transferred to beta keto acyl ACP synthase. And your guess would be absolutely correct. Okay. So what's going to happen in this step is notice here we have our beta keto acyl ACP synthase. Okay. Or KS. And KS is going to catalyze the transfer of A2 onto beta keto acyl acp synthase and we know that a2 right here okay now what's going to happen is again the same thing if we come back here to the very beginning right and we had a step in which we we transferred the malonyl group from malonyl coa onto the acyl carrier protein right and that was catalyzed by acetyl slash malonyl coa acp transferase right so you can imagine that we're going to have to do that as well so we're going to take another malonyl coa right I'm going to take another malonyl CoA. Let's see, where is that? Ah, right here. Okay, so we're going to take another malonyl CoA right here. And I notice I've color coded the carbons again that we're dealing with. And we're going to transfer that malonyl group onto the acyl carrier protein. So again, the carbonyl carbon of malonyl group is in yellow, the alpha carbon is going to be in orange. Okay, and then what we're going to do is the exact same step we've done before. And this is going to be catalyzed again by beta keto acyl acp synthase or ks so in the first step we're actually going to lose carbon dioxide because those electrons on the oxygen of the carboxylate kick in to form the carbonyl we lose carbon dioxide and that catalyzes the nucleophilic attack of these electrons right here let me do this in purple these electrons right here are going to attack the carbonyl carbon of the growing acyl chain on beta keto acyl acp synthase okay and that effectively does a nucleophilic acyl substitution with the loss of KS or with the loss of beta keto acyl ACP synthase. And it transfers that acyl chain onto um, the two carbons from the malonyl group. Okay. So again, keep in mind that this group right here, right? Let me do it in orange like I did before. This group right here, this is just our A2. Right, that's our A2, except now it's attached to beta keto acyl um, ACP synthase, right? But we're transferring that A2 ultimately onto the two carbons of the malonyl group on ACP. So again, this component right here, that's our A2. And we'll define an A3 later on. Okay, but keep in mind that we still have this beta ketone group that originally was part of the acyl group, but now it's a beta ketone group of A2. Okay, and everything now at this point is attached to the acyl carrier protein. Okay, okay, so now I've sort of shortened the steps here, but just keep in mind that we have this beta keto acyl ACP reductase, which is an NADPH dependent reductase, then we're going to dehydrate using beta hydroxyacyl ACP dehydratase. Then we're going to reduce that alkene using enoyl ACP reductase, and that's going to get us to this guy right here. So now we have this uh, acyl group, which is A3, right, that's attached to ACP. And then we're just going to repeat the process all over again. So what happened, what happened after we had um, the complete um, addition of two carbons to the ACL chain on ACP? Well, remember, we just transferred it back to beta keto 
uh, acyl ACP synthase, right? And I hope that makes sense. And that's catalyzed by KS. And now we have this A3 that's attached to beta keto ACLP, ACL ACP synthase, right? And then what happened? Well, we charged ACP again with malonyl CoA. And that was again catalyzed by acetyl slash malonyl CoA ACP transferase. And now we have this malonyl group that's charged. Um, to the ACP and we're just going to repeat the cycle over and over and over again and what we can do is we can actually color code these carbons again so let's say this one's our maroon we can say this one's gray and you just keep repeating this all over again and if we went through one more cycle of this if we went through one more cycle let me actually draw what we would have if we went through one more cycle of this fatty acid synthase right we would just have this okay so um, let me do it. So it would be, we had six carbons in A3, so we're going to have eight here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And our two carbons right here that were originally what we started with are going to be here, right? And then we had our first malonyl CoA, which is the green and purple, right? Our first malonyl CoA was the green and purple. Our second malonyl CoA was our orange and yellow, right? But our, our third malonyl CoA is what? Well, that's, that's this one right here. This, these are the two carbons from our third malonyl CoA. So that's just going to be our gray or, or silver, whatever you want to call it, and our maroon. Okay, so you can sort of keep track of where each particular carbon is. Now, what I want to do at this point is um, I want to do some practice questions about fatty acid synthase. And the teacher that I had for Biochem 2, and certainly this is for my students who take Biochem 2, okay, um, he likes to ask this question on the exam, okay. And the question is worded something like this, okay? Let's actually look at this molecule right here, okay? So this is an 18 carbon, this is an, or excuse me, this is an 8 carbon, excuse me. This is an 8 carbon fatty acyl ACP, okay? And the question is this, okay? Where did the omega carbon come from? So what molecule did the omega carbon come from? Well, um... The omega carbon is always the carbon that's most distal from the carboxylic acid derivative. So what's the most distal carboxylic acid derivative? Well, it's this one right here. Here's your carboxylic acid derivative. In this case, it's the thioester bond. Okay. So the omega carbon is always the carbon that's most distal from that. So in this case, our omega carbon is going to be this one. Right. That's our omega carbon. And I'll leave you there. Um, and in the next video, we'll actually answer the question. So I want to give you a chance to really think about, um, I'll give you a chance to think about uh, where that carbon might have come from. In other words, what molecule did it come from? Okay. And in the next video, we'll actually answer that question. See you in the next video.